All right, so this lesson is scientific notation. And I have a question that was sent in by Diego, which actually is not at all uncommon. I have students that point this out all the time, and they say the scientific notation confuses me. Why should we even need to use it? It would be much easier to just use the actual numbers. Now, I imagine some of the other students out there are probably thinking the same thing. Let me see if I can give you a good example for why it really is easier. Um, first, the biggest, uh, I, th I think, um, difficulty with understanding the real value of scientific notation is that while you're learning it, we tend to use smaller numbers. Uh, we want to use numbers that are relatively easy to understand so that the concept gets across easily. So instead of writing, um, oh, I don't know, maybe 1.2 million, uh, 1,200,000, yeah, divided by 1,000, yeah? Instead of writing something like this, we say, well, you should just use scientific notation, and you could write that as 1.2 times, oops, <laughs> times twice there, sorry, times 10 to the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 over 1 times 10 to the 1, 2, 3, 4th, 1, 2, 3, 3rd. Yeah, and then you can use scientific notation to solve it. And you take a look at this and you think, well, this looks confusing. This really isn't that hard. I could just cancel the zeros and I get 1,200 divided by 1 or just 1,200 and I'm done. You think this is just too confusing to be worth it. And I tend to agree you're probably right. However, this is not what scientific notation was developed for. This is just an example to give you the idea. Scientific notation was developed for really, really big and really, really small numbers. Um, let me give you an example. Say, for instance, you're an astronomer. Now, if you're an astronomer um, dealing with distances like to the closest galaxy, the very closest galaxy to our own is the Andromeda galaxy. And it's something like 2.4, I don't know, it's like quintillion miles away, or kilometers away, I mean. It's, um, it's a 2, 4, and then 18 zeros. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. So 2, 4, and 18 zeros. And if we were going to see how long it would take us to get there flying at the speed of light. So again, we're talking about the closest galaxy and getting there as fast as we think it might even become close to be physically possible to go. So we're talking about a relatively small calculation on, an, on a galactic scale or an astronomer scale. The speed of light is uh, about 1 times 10 to the 13th, or 1 with 13 zeros after it. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 kilometers per, uh, kilometers per hour, or kilometers per year, I'm sorry. So one light year is about this many kilometers, hundreds, thousands, millions, billions, 10 billion kilometers. And the closest galaxy is hundreds, thousands, millions, billions, trillions, 24 quadrillion, 24 quadrillion kilometers away. So this is a relatively easy calculation from a scientific standpoint. But writing out all these zeros takes forever. And you can see why something like this be a little bit unwieldy to write in the middle of a textbook over and over again. This is where scientific notation really comes in. I can write this same information as 2.4 times 10 to the 19th over 1 times 10 to the 13th. And then instead of calculating and then writing out and then crossing out all these zeros, I just use my rules for powers. 19 minus 13 is 6, so my answer is going to be times 10 to the 6th. And 2.4 divided by 1 is 2.4, so my answer is 2.4 times 10 to the 6th and I'm done. If I want to write that back out in longhand, I could say 2,400,000 is the number of years it would take to get to Andromeda if I was traveling at the speed of light.